June 10th, 2019, a very excited young man because that was the day I was going to buy my first car with my own money. My sister was kind enough to give me a ride to go pick the car up, and on the way I held the envelope of $2,800 in my hand. I wondered if it was actually a good decision. I mean, a first car should be something reliable like a Toyota or a Mazda or a Honda, but instead I went with a BMW. My heart was telling me to buy a BMW. My brain was telling me to buy something like a Mazda, something like a Toyota, something boring. I had negotiated with the seller a couple nights prior, down from a price of $3,500. It ended up being a really good deal for a car that ended up being impressively reliable, impressively nice, and just a really good all-round first car, and only car for about a year and a half. Two years and 15,000 miles later, I'm celebrating my two-year anniversary with this Bavarian beast right here. What can I tell you about it? Well, it's been really not that bad. We've had a couple of little issues, this car and I, mostly in the first few months, but after that, it really showed me that it's a trustworthy little car. That being said, though, this car hasn't let me off super easily these past two years. It's had a couple little issues. It's never actually broken down on me, but it's gotten very close quite a few times. There was the one time where, there's the time where the spark plug on cylinder six completely gave out on me. And driving this car when it's in lift pull mode, running on only five cylinders, not a fun experience. Many check engine lights, most of which have turned off. There are some issues it has now. When accelerating, sometimes it really hesitates. It feels like it does. It feels like it only has like 120 horsepower. It feels rough on acceleration. At times, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't. I've got a brake pad warning light. I've, it's been getting around 16 MPG lately, even though I mostly drive around town just to and from work. But that still is a pretty bad number. It's not usual for this car. It should be getting around 19, 20 at least. And there's a couple other little things. But the main issue that was bothering me was the way that it was driving. Something didn't feel right. It accelerated slowly and it felt pretty rough on acceleration. My dad took it to a BMW mechanic that he knows. In his examination, he unfortunately found a few other issues, which include the rear driveline assembly needs to be replaced, the rear springs and shocks need to be replaced, which doesn't sound cheap. The steering double joint needs to be replaced, which I have noticed there's a little bit of weirdness and vagueness in the steering. The crank case vent valve, otherwise known as the CVV, the intake manifold runner valve, whatever that is. The spark plugs need to be replaced. The oil filter housing gasket needs to be replaced. Not a big deal. The coolant thermostat upper radiator hose surge tank needs to be replaced. The secondary air pump mounts, the rest of the valve and it says hose. There's definitely some issues. Surprising ones is the rear springs and shocks. I honestly had no idea there was anything wrong with the rear springs and, and the rear shocks. It, they felt fine, but I guess that needs to be done. There's some stuff that needs to be fixed, but I mean, it's a 175,000 mile BMW, so there's always gonna be problems, but I'm really looking forward to getting this car fixed and just returning it to how it was when I bought it, a nice, smooth car. But over the past two years, what have I done to this car to make it different? In other words, modifications. What kind of modifications have I done in terms of modifications that I've carried out, I fitted new badges to the hood and the trunk lid that are instead of the white and blue that the BMW logo normally is, they're white and black. So it kind of matches the paint color of the car a little bit better than blue and white and it just straight up looks nicer in my opinion. I fitted a very, very small rubber spoiler to the trunk. I didn't want something like ridiculous and big and Oh, look at me. I just wanted something just to kind of make it look a little bit better, a little bit sportier. It's really not very noticeable, but it actually did clean up the look of the car. It, made, it just looks a lot nicer. It just looks naked without it. It really is nice. I mean, it was a cheap rubber spoiler I got off of Amazon, I think. And the biggest modification you'll find is right here. I fitted a 
330i style steering wheel. I don't know what the actual correct name for it is, but I know they're more common in higher end 346s. Came out of a E53 X5 in the junkyard, but it's a much better looking steering wheel. It's more comfortable, it's sportier looking. I'm not interested in modifying this car. I just like just keeping it how it was from the factory. I haven't even changed the exhaust. It's still the stock exhaust that came with it from the factory. I find myself getting back in this car. I have the windows down. And I just hear how quiet the car is. And I'm just like, man, this thing is just so nice. It's just such a calm car. It really does feel like it's a much more expensive car when you're driving it. When you're driving it at the moment, how this car really is, if you're driving it below five tenths, it's really, really nice. That being said, how about we take a drive and then I can talk you through again how this car drives. I can remind you, even though we talked about it in a previous video. Turn off the air conditioning because that way you can see things. All right. Well. This is the second, no, third time we've all taken a drive together in this car, so there's not really all that much to talk about that I haven't already talked about. In terms of a car for $3,000 as a first car, you could do a lot worse in terms of driving experience and luxury and just everything. This car is a bargain for less than $3,000. Especially if you can find one in good condition like I did. When I bought this car in June of 2019, it was pretty close to how it is now. I did a couple things to clean up the appearance, the appear, the appearance, the appearance of the car, including that rear spoiler and the badges which I replaced mainly because the front hood logo was really faded and peeling off and it just looked gross, so I needed a new badge anyways. But I really took some time, I, I cleared up the headlights, I did some buffing and polishing on the paint so it looked a lot better. But one thing is it doesn't drive as nice as it used to, so... Whoa! Or do you meant G-forces of the 184 horsepower? We just get tips of phone over because it's so powerful! It isn't powerful though, that's the problem. It's not as powerful as it should be. Even when I was accelerating there, it wasn't full throttle, but you can tell that there's something missing with it. This car used to accelerate harder and smoother than it does now, and even though that acceleration wasn't as bad as previous ones that I've had, Half the time it'll be okay acceleration like it was just now. Half the time it'll just be straight up poor acceleration, like really embarrassingly bad. While it was enough to tip my camera over, it still isn't really enough to set your pants on fire. It's a 325, so that actually never really is gonna happen. With only 184 horsepower, it's by modern standards, and even for its day, it was quite lacking. Of course, you're sitting there thinking, why is he complaining? He could have just bought a 330i, but yes, thank you. That's a great idea, except for the fact that I didn't have enough money for a 330. I would love a 330. <laughs> they make a lot more power, and that would be pretty much perfect. I'd also love an M3 CSL too, but we can't. I can't afford that. It's too expensive. <laughs> so it really doesn't drive as nice as it should at the moment not a lot to talk about with this car because I've really basically gone over everything that's important that is that you need to know about this car. It hasn't given me an exciting ownership experience which is good that's a good thing like the last thing you need out of your first car that you purchase with your own money your first car the last thing you need is something that's going to be unreliable and let you down all the time and that's the last thing you so I'm grateful that it's been a slightly boring ownership experience and there's not a lot to talk about with it. Some days I kind of feel like there's a lot of other cars out there that I really want to own and maybe someday I should sell it. I struggle to really think about doing that though because I really do love this car and it's when I think about it I can't imagine being without it. It's just 
been like a part of my life for the past two years, and it's hard to think of really parting away with it, but I might have to do that someday. So that's really all there is to talk about this car. I've had it for two years, and it's been a pleasant ownership experience with not much to report, but I still maintain, even with all the issues this car has now that needs to be fixed, which I'll update you on the repair process in a future video coming out probably soon. $3,000 can really get you a car that looks, feels, and drives about four times more expensive. Or at least that's how it makes me feel. It just feels really nice. What do you guys think? Do you think I should get rid of it, sell it, get something more interesting? Or is there an idea that you have for a video that I should do on it? Something I could try with it? Let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas of what I should do with this car in the future because I really, because I could always use more video ideas. I appreciate everybody who clicked on this video. Oh, I gotta make this light. Yeah, using a tripod as a camera stand in the car is great idea. So, like I said, Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you guys have a great day, and I hope you guys are looking forward to my next car video on fixing this car. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Let's tip the camera over with our G-forces and our amazing acceleration. Whoa! Whoa! Oh my god! Oh, are you guys okay? Are you, are you okay? Whoa!